Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the past, we've spoken a lot about increasing your chances of being employable, but obviously from a strategic point of view. And today I have decided to invite a specialist in recruitment that is actually going to give us all information, everything we need to know about becoming employable and getting that job, especially if you've got a degree or you've got a specialty or you're just in the market um, trying to get a bit of direction on where to go to get that job. I'm going to let him introduce himself and we'll take it from there. Hi guys, my name is Mishak, the surname is Tudezi, and like she said, I am a recruitment specialist. I've been in the business for about nine years now, worked with different clients, big companies, worked with, um, you know, different people, worked with a lot of different positions, right. basically. So, yeah, hopefully you guys will learn a thing or two from me. Yeah, I hope so too. So, we are going to be doing a three-part series, basically giving you guys three videos on so much information what you need to know to actually become employable. Yeah. So on this video, we are particularly talking about recruitment agencies. And I wanna know, Mishak, what are recruitment agencies and what do you guys actually do? Well, Michelle, <laughs> it's quite a difficult question, guys, because um, a lot of people misunderstand you know, us with different companies. So what a recruitment agency is, is we are an employment broker. So we basically, um, you know, the middleman between people who are looking for jobs and people who are looking to employ people who are looking for jobs. Okay, yes. so basically the middleman. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So you becoming the middleman, I am looking for a job and I'm in the um, market. Mm -hmm. Do I really need you guys? And what criteria of people do you guys actually assist? Look, um, I, think, I think everybody out there stands a bit of a better chance to get a job if you are working with the recruitment agencies okay. as opposed to when you're looking okay. for a job by yourself. Yes. So um, the people that we look for obviously are people that will move. So ultimately what we're looking for guys is people that are hot, hot Stop. candidates. Stop. Stop, <laughs> yes. You know? um, so okay. it's, it's pointless for us to be working with, with an individual that's for an example not looking for, for a job because then what is the point of having them right. be? And it's also pointless for us to have people that our clients or companies are not looking to employ. Yes. So we're looking for people that are out there, you know, to market themselves, that are out there doing very good things to make sure that they are employable at, at the end of the day. Okay, and, and what are those things? You say you're a broker and you're looking for the stock. What should that stock look like? So how do I identify myself as the stock that a recruitment agency actually needs? So let's, let's take it for an example okay. for, for people that are still in tertiary right mm -hmm. now. So... You are in tertiary, you are starting towards a degree, yes. and there's two of you guys basically. Let me just make an example. It's, mm -hmm. it's myself, it's Michelle and Mishak. Michelle, Michelle and Mishak are studying you know, um, the same course, yes. and Michelle decides to go on her second year, decides to go do her practicals, right. do an internship, do a learnership, so that goes into her profile. Yes. So, the, the chances are, as soon as we both complete the degree, mm -hmm. Mishak, it doesn't stand a better, better chance of getting a job, you know, versus Michelle. Yes. Michelle would have put herself in a better position mm -hmm. to be employed mm -hmm. or to be employable. Right. So we're looking for people that are putting an effort to making themselves wow. employable. So basically, you need to bring in value. Yes. More than the degree, because everyone else is bringing the degree, but it's like, what what else have you done? Exactly. What else? And I think this is so important because I did a video um, a few days ago and we on the channel that was speaking about investing in yourself and bringing in value to the market. And I think this really speaks into bringing value. Um, and, and I know a lot of young people will say that it's difficult to find a job in general. It is. Um, is it easier for, for, for people that volunteer, for instance, they volunteer during while they, or they do their practicals and they volunteer companies while they are getting their degree? Definitely, guys, understand this. You ultimately are responsible for your own career. So if you are studying towards a degree or a diploma mm -hmm. and you start volunteering while still studying, chances are that particular company may take you as soon as you complete your True. studies. You get know what I'm saying? So you've yeah. put yourself at an advantage. Yeah. So should a position become available at that particular organization, yeah. 
as opposed to them going to look for somebody yeah. out there, they already have Michelle who's, who's been part of their team. Yeah. You know, they understand their culture and so forth. Same applies with us as recruitment agencies. So when I look at my CVs and I'm, I'm, I come across Michelle, who's taken an initiative right. to go and volunteer or go do an internship, whatever the case may be, chances are I know this person has done something, mm -hmm. as opposed to me coming across a CV of a person who just you know, completed their degree, mm -hmm. never yeah. attempted to do anything mm -hmm. during st their study. Mm -hmm. So the chances are, it's also a risk for me as a recruitment agency to be working with that particular individual mm -hmm. because I'm going to be investing time in them, but they failed to, to invest time in, the, in their own career. So mm -hmm. we work with people that want to be employed. And that are actually working. I, I, I really like that. And what I like about it is... You, with everyone else that's getting a degree at varsity, you need to ask yourself what you're bringing different yes. that'll make you employable um, to the market. And I mean, as a recruiter, let's talk about employment. Do you think that there's enough employment opportunities for young people in South Africa? Look, um, I believe there is. Okay. I believe there is. Um, I mean, I, I remember when I when I started in the industry, I was yeah. recruiting for call center agents. I mean, rather for call centers. So I've worked for a number of call centers. I was involved in the startup of a great company that's now doing quite well. So, I mean, at that time, I'd be recruiting a minimum of 150 people a week. Sure. So you tell me. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. there is job opportunities for, right. for the youth out there. Mm -hmm. It's just that they don't know where to go. Yeah. And the most common challenge that we used to face, and I think we you know and believe yeah. that there's still a challenge even today, is that our youth is unemployable. Sure. So people what is what what is sorry, what is being un unemployable? Like what what do you need if you're saying somebody's un unemployable, mm -hmm. what do they look like? Somebody who's unemployable is somebody who's for an example, um, you know, you remember when you're still young, you yes. go to school because your parents tell you to go right. to school. Right. But until such a time you are in grade 10 or grade 11, then you realize that actually this is going to add value to my life. Right. So some people don't realize that at mm. that early age. So they just finish their matric. They can't articulate. You know, they can't speak well in English. They also don't want to improve the, the, you know, the, the communication skills. So somebody who's unemployable is somebody who has a qualification or a matric but they are not able to apply what it is that they've studied over the you know over the years while they were still in, in, in school or in, in tertiary for yeah. an example so you need to be somebody who's employable you need to be able to communicate i mean i remember there was an instance where we interviewed a you know a candidate for a call center job mm -hmm. and this particular candidate stopped the interview because they couldn't express themselves in english and said can I please be interviewed in my home language? Yeah. So it's quite sad to see that, but it ultimately, is. English is the primary language we'll be looking True. for. So and yeah, that's what companies that's are what, definitely looking yes. for when they're trying to yes. to hire someone. Yes. Sure, that's actually important, and I, I, I think we can get into the in depth of why why people can't articulate themselves like why do they struggle is it because of the school that they went to is it because of their circumstances in life but you can't necessarily put it to that because i went to a public school exactly exactly, exactly. <laughs> i went to a school in the country uh, like i didn't yes. go to a nanny school. look I, I think like i always say when you know when i when i do my motivational speaking is that like i said to you guys earlier on you determine you know where you go in life so people can articulate because they fail to practice. Practice makes improvement. Uh, so the more you speak it, the better you get at it. And I always you know, say this to a group of candidates when I'll be doing bark interviews that guys understand this, English is just a language. English yeah. is just a language. I can't speak Chivenda. I'm still learning, but Chivenda and English are no different. They both languages. However, the difference is English happens to be a language that we use globally. Yeah. So that's a, that's, that's a language that you need to teach yourself mm -hmm. to understand, to speak, and be articulated. And yeah. then as soon as you are able to do that, then you are employed. Because, I mean, let's be honest, mm -hmm. most jobs in South Africa only require a person to have a matric. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yes. yeah. Look, I'm an example of that. Yes. 
also myself, yeah. you know, entry level jobs only require you to have a matric. And the rest you're just selling yourself. Exactly. Basically. Yes. And, I, then I, you, I, I, and then you can work your, work, you, yeah. your, your way up within that particular And a lot of people have managed to do that. Yes. I like that. Let's talk about the business part of a recruitment agency. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys are a full-fledged business. You guys are... What's, what's, what's the flow of money? Because there's a lot of scams as far as that's concerned. How do you guys make your money? Um, I just want you to really get in, in depth with that. Lovely, lovely. I understand where you're coming from because the, um, a lot of agencies out there that will require money from people that they're supposed to be helping get sure. jobs. Yeah. So um, recruitment agencies are not supposed to be charging a person who's a job seeker. Mm. So our business is worth our clients, with, which, which are the, the companies, companies, the employees. The, the employees. Okay. So we charge on a placement fee. We have an agreement that we will have with that particular organization. So there's no way we will require an, you know, a job seeker mm. to, to, to be paying us. To pay 2,000 so that so, we can make them employable. Because yes. that's what they promised me. No, no, guys, be careful out there. You know, any recruitment agency that's going to require you to pay them a fee, yeah. they're out there to make money out of you. They, they don't have your best interest at heart. They don't have any good intentions. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do, any recruitment agency that you work with or that's going to call you and want to offer you a job, make sure you Google them, make sure. Most of these companies, even when you Google them, they're not even there. They're not there. Yes. Uh, but remember also, I think because people are desperate and um, I think to just substantiate what you're saying is no one can make you employable if you're not. Yes. Like you can pay as much money as you want, but no one can make you attractive to the employer because the employer is very adamant on what it is that they want because exactly. they guys have criteria yes. on the type of person that they yes. want so no one can forge that and make no. you look like you've got 10 years of no. experience when you actually no. don't have no. which is why they make they, when they make you want you to pay that money that's what they're promising um, everyone else that they're going to make them exactly. with, which is okay which is so if you are paying money to a recruitment agency it's, it's a scam so yes. let's let's talk about how you guys actually get paid because i've worked with recruitment agencies before in my career mm -hmm. and it was a little bit um confusing how do you guys make your money? Do you guys take off that person's salary? What, what are the contractual agreements and do they affect me as the job seeker? No. Okay. That's why we don't even disclose that to our, oh, to our, okay. to, you know, to our candidates. Yes. The reason why we don't disclose that is obviously for um, you know, certain reasons. <laughs> Confidential reasons. Confidentiality. So we, we hardly mention that yes. to our, um, yes. our candidates. So what will happen, for an example, I'll, I'll approach um, company X, um, you know, present my services to company X, and then they'll ask, you, ask me for my terms and conditions. Yes. So I will then send them my terms and conditions, then we'll negotiate around that, and then eventually we will reach an agreement. So yes. I'll give you this answer though. 90% mm -hmm. of the time, the placement fee will be on your annual payment. Oh, so okay. total cost to company to company annually yes. of a candidate. Okay. It, it does not affect you or your pocket at okay. all. Okay. Yes. And and if I get fired, that means you guys have lost the business. Not necessarily. Okay. That's why there's terms and conditions. So we have a, what we call a, a warranty, um, a guarantee period, which okay. is about three months. So if you've been with the company for three months, you may leave them after three months. It doesn't affect me. Oh, so yes. you still get the annual payment anyway? Please. Wow. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And let's say during that time I get promoted and my salary increases. No. we. So once you've been with the organization, even if they promote you within the three months or whatever, once you've been appointed with them, remember the initial agreement would have been on what they took you on. Oh, in within the beginning. The, in, okay. within the so the increment from, doesn't, no, it it doesn't, doesn't affect, affect you guys. I was going to be oh. making money. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, and, and look, these are questions that personally I, I used to ask myself a lot. So mm -hmm. I worked for company before and I when I was in corporate and I got the job through a recruitment agency mm -hmm. and I always wondered because after some time I got an increment but I was wondering whether the recruitment agency <laughs> is hoying from my money you no, know no, no, or, okay so that, that that's not no, how it works that, okay that's not how it works. okay that, that's really interesting mm -hmm. and I think going forward do you think that young people should be aggressive in terms of contacting and getting help from recruitment agencies yes yes guys um, you should be ag aggressive about everything that you want in life, <laughs> right? Ultimately, that's amazing. so. So yes, definitely. The more you know, aggressive you are, the more uh, you contact them. Yeah. They they remember you. You know, when they come to a position that 
who's best suitable for you, the first person they're going to think about is you. Because you are consistent, you know, it's a bit of a... Hey, this one, you know, because because yeah. obviously we are we, we've got work, we've got a lot of people we deal with, we've got a lot of companies to deal with. So although it's a bit of a what we don't particularly prefer, yeah. but yes, it's for you. At the end of the day, do what's best for you. Yeah, but I think it's also good to be top of mind as well. Yes. Like the more you're following up, and the yes. more you're seeking help, yes. and the more you're trying to find out what you can yes. do, it increases your chances because if Mishak knows that Michelle's looking for a job. If a new post comes, I'm the first person you're going to think about mm-hmm. because I'm constantly pestering you yes, on it. Yes. But don't get annoying. Like, do yes. it. I don't want to use that word. Don't. Get <laughs> yeah, annoying. don't get annoying. Yes, like, don't, don't, don't let it. Yes, don't let it get there. Yes. So another thing, guys, is that if you, I'm committing myself to you as a recruitment agency or as a recruitment consultant, yeah. I need you to commit to commit yourself to me as well. So. It's, it's going to be pointless for me to be investing time in you when you've got other, you know, 10 other people investing time in you and you're not even open to me about that. Oh. So we, we also want you to tell us who else are you working with oh. and if they're if they sending you for interviews. Because oh. one thing is that yeah. there's a lot of us out there, so you find that we are shortlisting you for the same position, for an example. Mm. And then you will come across as a person who's unstable on your side because it's now a duplicate application. Uh, X, company X has sent you, and company C has sent you. So rather be upfront with your, you know, you know, with your recruiter. Be have, have a very good relation and a very open relationship because that's what I also have with my uh, my candidates. I've got a very open relationship, which helps them and helps me as well. Okay, so should you only be registered with one recruiter, or or are you like, is it advisable? Like, what's advisable? Do you register with? 10 recruiters or should you only do it with one? There's no rule. There's no rule that says you can only register with one. Okay. Um, but it's also very nice if you have a recruiter that's, like I said, has committed to you, that you also commit to them. I think it goes back okay. to, you know, loyalty. So, so if I say to you that I have registered with other five recruiters, mm-hmm. does that disadvantage me from becoming the first person to be... Like what? Like, is it is it a disadvantage if I tell, or no, if I'm just registered it's not. with other people? It's not. It's not a disadvantage per se. It will now leave me with a decision to make because okay. if you are registered with ten recruitment agencies and I, I get Sabelo, who's only mm. who's only registering with me, yeah. and you guys are in the same more or less um, same level or mm. are in the same you know category. Uh, category. Yes. Chances are, I'd, I'd probably work with with Sabelo. I get that. I because that. because he's more he's more he's more committed to me. Yeah. He's but the other person has other options. So exclusivity is normally more important. Exclusivity. Yes, I that's like what that. we use. Very <laughs> smart. <laughs> exclusivity. Yes. I like that. Okay. Okay. I think I really think that that gives us like a, a lot of information on what recruiters are and how they can assist. Where can people find you? I know we're still going to do two more videos, but where can people find you? How can they get hold of you to just find out more information on being employable? Look, um, I, I do a lot of videos on, on Facebook, so they can follow me on Facebook. My name, Mishak uh, Zoteti, Mishak okay. Zoteti. Okay. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, but like I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to go up. It, it needs to go up. Yeah. Um, the, otherwise, they can give me a call on my mobile number, which is 60 if I don't answer, then they're more than welcome to text me via WhatsApp. If I get a missed call, I'm most likely to return that call. Hopefully, it's um, it's a call that's worth my time. Yes. Don't waste my time. <laughs> yeah, I think like anybody, don't waste anybody's time. But yes. guys, that's basically uh, Mishak. If you need any help, if you've got any questions pertaining recruitment agencies, you want to connect to a recruitment agency, whatever the case is, he's your man. Chat to him. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. We will be bringing you guys more videos and we really hope that this was in- insightful. Leave us your comments, share this video, let us know what you think, let us know what else, what other questions do you guys have that you would actually like to find out from a recruitment specialist so we can actually get them um, answered. Have yourself an awesome Thank Bye. you so much.